Hello guys! Hello, hello, hello! We are here with the Basement Chronicles, week 13. We're going to be doing some grain sack upholstery today. Let me grab my air supply. And Megan will be popping on in just a second. How is everybody today? Thank you for joining us here. It is week 13. Can you believe it? It's week 13 of the Basement Chronicles. I can't believe we're still doing this. And um, we are um, on a quest to uh, share projects with you from the basement week by week so that we can clear space for me to regain my upholstery area. So thank you so much for joining us. Let us know that you're here. Um, I hope you don't mind us doing another grain sack project with these, or upholstery project, but that's what we're gonna be doing today. I am super excited. Those of you that do follow over on Facebook or in our text group, know that we released a beautiful set of authentic German grain sack stencils. These have been rendered from the actual grain sack collection that I've had for many, many years. I have cataloged them by photographing them and worked with a stencil maker to create these beautiful, beautiful, one-of-a-kind stencils. And they are available now on our website. I'm going to put a link in the description box below so that you can take a look at those, at those if you're interested. We went live on Facebook last week to share a few projects that we created um, on cloth and also on some other surfaces. So here's another example of how I use the grain sack stencil in a little bit of a different way, surrounding it with some florals just to give it a different look. And I'm going to show you my um, what I do with the grain sacks, my originals, is I actually do projects like this. This is a beautiful, I have a set of these chairs, and I am actually in the process of upholstering this set of chairs so that um, they will have the original grain sacks on them. So this is what the originals look like. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my gosh, look at the curved, that's a good one. Actually, sorry, I didn't know what time it was. Yeah, and here's here's a part of another one, but I piece these together in, on uh, chairs and stools. And today we're actually going to be doing a stool um, with one of our original stencils. So let's get it started. Megan's just finding a chair so that she can start taking your questions. But this is a really, really cute little stool that we found. Um, gosh, you know what? I don't even remember where we found it now, but isn't it adorable? It's so adorable. Oh, I can't wait to order some. They're, they're, they're available to order right now. You can pre-order. We think to be shipping them around the 22nd of May. I'll put a link here. Yeah. So this was a really fun little stool. It's in great shape and I love the curve here. So I think I'm gonna do this kind of in a bit of a um, deconstructed look, okay? So I'm gonna put this aside and let's take a look at some of these wonderful stencils and we'll decide what we are going to, what we're going to put on this stool. I have a few different options. I'm gonna put my. There we go. But they're they're pretty awesome. So um, I have a few different fabric options. Which come on you. There we go. I have a few different fabric options. I just wanted to show you some of the things that I use. This is actually um, an antique. Um, linen. This is actually a European grain sack. 
that I had purchased quite some time ago. But I would so I would probably split this right down the middle and use this on a bigger piece of upholstery. So I'm going to reserve this one for now. And then I have a bunch of this awesome linen that um, I have used it for upholstery. I've used it in bits and pieces. Let's demonstrate on this. And then I think that ultimately what I'm going to be using is this really nubby, natural, stonewashed linen right here. This is a domestic product. Um, if you guys have a fabric store, you'll probably find whatever you need. All right, so let's grab these stencils and I'm just gonna demonstrate one of these right now and then we will move on to stenciling our fabric for the stool and we'll go ahead and upholster that in a deconstructed style. All right, so here we go. <laughs> I'm looking for my stencil brush. I brought everything down in the pile. Megan, do we have anybody watching with us yeah, today? Yeah, lots of people. Wonderful. Wendy, it is really nice here. The it is, is beautiful. a beautiful, beautiful day. We're having a little cookout today. I'm so excited. Typically, when I stencil, I'll stencil from the cap of my my paint jar. Or did you my, find your brush? My paint jar. I did. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I just put a small amount, and I work in the cap because it's a very shallow amount of paint. You don't want to overload your brush when you're stenciling. And then I will offload onto a paper towel, onto a paper table covering. <laughs> I don't no, get not. my paper towel. But that does two things. It removes the excess paint from my brush and it also helps to distribute that paint more evenly throughout my brush. No, you're not late, Bev. You're not late at all. Heavens no. That is the joy of rewind also. So let me see if Hi, I Donna. can tip this down a little bit so you can get a closer oh, look. Oh, it is connected. Whoops. Okay. When we're down here, we don't use our switcher, and um, we'll have to look into that. The Moss products just came back in stock, so they'll be shipping out in the next couple days. Yep. Isn't it awesome? And if you ever are waiting on a product to come back into stock, there's a place to add your email and get a notification so that you don't have to just keep going back and checking. Um, I can see that there were a lot of people that did that because I'm getting a lot of, or I just added them back to our inventory and I'm getting a lot of orders for a moment. <laughs> yes, yeah, a lot, because it's a really cool product. Every time I dip into the paint, I'm offloading. I want a very dry brush that gives it that rustic aged appearance. And also keep in mind that I'm always able to add additional layers of paint if I need to. So I will be using this little scrap for um, another really awesome product or project that I'm going to be doing. But there it is okay cool. so I just I have it very faded and kind of in and out faded and that is the look that I want I'm gonna be cutting these up into parts and pieces for another awesome project that I'll be sharing with you guys probably in a week or so all right so now let's grab our fabric let's keep it out of the paint because that would be just my luck And Shirley and Jay are literally have like every surface covered here. I think when they know that I'm coming down here to work on things, mm -hmm. they literally they're like splattering. All yeah, they're the literally floor. like, um, let's let's make sure that that mom is, uh, keeps things neat down here. So I'm just going to quickly um, cut a piece off that is roughly the size. I just want you to see your angle and make sure you're okay. Yeah, it's, good. it's good for right now. 
Like oh, this. it needs to turn a little this bit. Way. But you might need to unhook. See up above, Megan. He's got it way back. Oh, that he might not be able to. No, it's literally nailed into nailed place. into place. Okay. Let me switch it over a bit. Sorry a if I'm making you guys dizzy. Be sure to leave us any questions that you may have. You're happy with this? Yeah, perfect. So I just want to make sure that I've got enough overlap here. I'm going to be going around this, and then I'm going to finish it off, I think, with some upholstery tacks. I'm going to do this one a little bit differently than just straight up upholstery. That's a great idea. Um, Arlinda says, I'm getting a bulk pack of extra large king size pillowcases to make sacks. Hopefully using your stencils, because all I have to do is cut slits, add grommets, run the cord through, and poof, done. Yeah. Absolutely. Great idea. So I'm just cutting this a little bit oversized. I'll be trimming this away later. I just want to make sure that I have enough fabric that's going to completely wrap around and cover. We just got our delivery just today of all the new items. Oh IOD. my gosh, I shared that with the text group. Just just the picture of the boxes. Yeah. And of course, everybody's like, oh, are you going to show us? Are you going to show us? I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> She's yeah. headless, yes. It's very hard down here to get. Um, That's okay. You don't need to look at me. I just want you looking right here. <laughs> You've all seen my face before, right? Okay, let's get this at a nice angle, and then we're going to decide which stencil we want to use. I'm going to hold it. No, I think we're good. That's okay. good. So let's take a look. We have, you just saw the Albert Roth that we did. We also have... Um, I know, I noticed that she put the material on the paint. I'm assuming she knows what It's dry. Doing. That's okay. dry. Okay, we have the oxen, but now what I'll do is I'll kind of put it up here to see which one fits, which one is going to be the best fit. Okay, I might reserve, I like this one. I might reserve these longer ones for another project. Mm -hmm. Stephanie appreciates that you're showing us what you're doing because lots of people on YouTube just want you to see their face. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, like, like I said, you've seen it all before. Here's that beautiful Rosa Getzner one. I'm kind of leaning toward the George Mend. I think that is a lovely stencil. And I think we can put that right yeah, on this perfect. rustic stonewash yeah. linen. I'm just going to kind of center it up here. And again, I'm going to work right out of the lid, dip my stencil brush in, and then I'm going to offload. Could you grab me some paper towel? That might be a better option. Okay, and then I'm going to offload that distributes the paint throughout my stencil brush and also um, removes any excess. Then I'm just going to hold this down. You could also use a little stencil adhesive. You could tape it as well. I'm just going to, I'm just going to go for it, all right? <laughs> I am preparing a YouTube video with lots of ideas for how to use these stencils and I am so excited. So I hold with my opposite hand and I'm scrubbing that paint into the fabric and I'm working with a dryer brush that does two things. It's going to keep it from um, collecting along the edges and getting those little globs. You know, we none of us like to see globs on our stencils. Oh good Wendy, I'm glad you found that. And it also gives me a light application. If I want to deepen it, I can certainly add more paint, another layer of paint. Every time I dip in the brush again, I can't say this enough, offload. So I'm using Fusion Mineral Paint. Um, 
one of the questions that we often get is, will fusion wash out a fabric? No. <laughs> I know. And I always say, I have a closet full of paint clothes to prove that it does not wash out. I've ruined so many clothes. Now, if you catch it right away, you you are likely to be able to throw some fusion brush soap on it. And um, you've really got to catch it, though. You do have to catch it. Yeah, this has a built-in top coat. So it has those hardeners and the resins in it that make it super hard and adhesive. Uh, I think... We can show the new IOD stuff Thursday next week, right? I believe it's Thursday. Mm -hmm. I'm a tease, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> well, they are. We'd show them right now if we could. I know. I can't. Sworn to secrecy. <laughs> I don't want to be that person and get in trouble. <laughs> no way. Okay, ready for the big reveal? This is my favorite part. Here we go. Look at how pretty that is. That is so pretty. Wow. I love this. Okay. So uh, she, I've never seen her use a sponge, so I would say you prefer the br a brush over a sponge. Yes, right? and I'll tell you why. When you're she's stenciling, a swirler. When you when you um, are upholstery or when you're stenciling on fabric. You definitely want to use a brush because you need to scrub that into the surface of the fabric. But I've never even seen you use a sponge. Yeah, you know, I, I prefer a stencil brush. I guess I'm old fashioned. All <laughs> Is right. that a newfangled thing, a sponge? Well, you know, sometimes <laughs> it's like, oh, the sponge might be a little quick and easy or oh, whatever, I but um, I... Sometimes when we look for the quick and easy way, it's not always the best way as far as for lasting. So here's how I'm going to be treating this. Um, it's, all, it's just about dry. I did not bring my iron down today, but what I would do is I would lay a cloth over this and I would heat set this paint. So a hot, dry iron, dry iron. And I would just press over that. That's going to heat set the Fusion Mineral paint. All right. What I'm going to do is after I'm done upholstering, I'll come back and I'll press this so that I'll heat set it. So I just want to get this centered up. Um, that's a good question. Um, since you're using the Fusion paint, doesn't it clog your stencil if you don't wash it after using it? You know what? I use so little paint. I, I am I'm so bad, you guys. I never wash my stencils. You do if you use chalk paint. If I use chalk paint, yes, because that will reactivate with water and it washes off easily. When I'm using Fusion, honest to goodness, and I, I reached out to um, a... a a stencil person who has been in the industry a long time like what do you use to clean the fusion mineral paint out of stencils and she said I don't I just I don't so I mean honestly I mean that's it's your call I just don't because um you know I would have to use them probably 40 times before they would really build up so just keep that in mind um and it depends on what kind of paint you're using too it really does. All right, so I was going to go for a deconstructed look, but I'm thinking, you know what? Maybe I still am. Maybe I still am. So I have centered this. Love this rustic linen. And I'm going to start always, when I upholster, I go to opposite sides. Today I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way. I, I brought my air gun but I'm gonna use some tacks. Why? Because I want more of a deconstructed look. So I'm using, this is my dad's, <laughs> I love using this. This is my dad's tack hammer from when he did upholstery. And I'm just using these little upholstery tacks. This is the old fashioned way. What you certainly could do is you could, um, just make sure that we can see this. You could,
I just think it gives it a really cool look. So I'm going to put about three or four tacks in here. And I'm spacing them right above the ridge. Are we able to see this? Maybe we want to... I mean, it's not zoomed in, but you can... You could zoom it see? in just a touch. Yeah, why don't we try to zoom it in just a little bit. So what you could also do is you could staple this or um, and then add some trim. But I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go the old-fashioned way right now and use my dad's. How's that? Can you see the idea? That's good. Okay, let me do couple more and then I'm going to switch over to the other side. Um, Stephanie's asking if the tacks will add texture to the piece. Absolutely. That's what I want. So another thing that you could do that would probably make this a little... Oh, yep, see I've got some broken wood there. Okay. I might have to have JR come after that. Um, I could hot glue this down and then add my tacks. It it might help. To keep it in place. To keep it in place, for sure. I don't know why. I was just channeling my dad today with this hammer. I'm going to pull that nice and taut. I would be so nervous about it not being centered. Really? But it's perfect. Well, yeah, it's, it's good. Have you ever done that and then oh, have to tear it out? Absolutely. Have I? Yes. Absolutely. I've had to do a lot of things like that <laughs> as I've been learning. So I'm going to just get some of these in place just to hold it. I'll work the other ends and then we will. Switch around. Okay, so now I want to pull it this way and that makes it so nice and taut. See that? Mm -hmm. certainly don't want to hammer 200 tacks in here with everybody listening. <laughs> that stencil is the George Munn, right? I'll give you a link to that. Oops. Here's another thing that's, because I'm working at a little bit of a different angle that I'm accustomed to, um, if I don't hit this straight on, it's going to Again, this is more of a deconstructed look, which is why I'm not super fussy about the finished product. I might take this one home with me. I love the shape of this stool. I'm sure there there may be some upholsters out there that are literally like gritting their teeth. What is she doing? You don't think they'd speak up? I don't maybe. It truly is tough to work at an angle that you're not accustomed to. Okay, and then I'll pull this nice and taut on the other side. Oops. I love these. 
because I hope that this kind of a thing never goes out of style. It doesn't you get to decide what's in style. That's right. right, I can. That is right. Anybody have any other questions? What's it like in your part of the country? said there was still snow on the ground there. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay, then what I'm going to do here, you guys, is I'm just going to make a simple corner pleat. Now, this is where I will use my staple gun. I want to hold this in place. Of course, I'm out of staples. Where are they? I got them. Okay. Okay, so I'm just giving it a little tack there to hold that in place, and then I'll cover up that staple with Cute. my fabric fold. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, that's how I'm going to make my corner. Nice. Very cute. It's cute? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to tack this in place. And I'm just going to miter this and fold this corner over nice and tight and add a tack to hold it in place. Lisa you... said don't chip your corner here. Oh, well then it'll just be time to get another one, Lisa. Can I wet them? I just, I just think like, can you imagine like my dad used, I just get such a kick out of this, that my dad used this when he was working on his projects. Okay, we'll come over here. I don't think you can ever show how to miter a corner enough. Tap um, it in place. Carlinda yep. asked out of everything your dad made, what was your favorite and why? Oh, oh my, my gosh, goodness. he made so many things. He really did. Oh my gosh, Arlinda. He made the most incredible like tables like one of those tilt top round tape like mm. round tables my brother has that um he i mean he didn't bring a lot of that kind of stuff home um because it was you know he had to it was being sold in the furniture factory but oh but my he God. still did a lot of woodworking even when he was done Oops, with went, that job look i went the wrong way with this okay see i came this way and i didn't mm. want to do that I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to pull this out. I don't have my little tack puller here, but guess what? This is a deconstructed look anyway, so I'm just going to pull that out. When my grandma taught um, Gosh, my dad toll has. painting, she had like a very successful business going there, and he made all of the, the wood things, just like JR does, like yeah. that people would paint. He did. Um... You know what? He made birdhouses. Oh, he yeah. He made, I mean, my dad could do, he could build anything, really. Just like JR. Yeah, absolutely. And my brothers are very skilled woodworkers. Yes. Yeah. And it's so, you know, it's really kind of neat to see, like, oh, gosh, cupboards that he made for my mom and to see them still around and, mm -hmm. you know, the, the ones then that she painted. And, um, and it was just, my goodness, it was just kind of cool to see. Mm -hmm. That the, nail is giving you a hard time. It sure huh? is. Do you need me to hold it? No. I just got to. This truly is, like. A trickier way of doing this upholstery, but I just wanted to do something a little different and show yeah. you guys. That there's more than one way to upholster a stool. That's exactly right. And you're going to show them every single one. Yep. And so <laughs> I'm just now, I am just spacing my tacks. They don't have to be even. Like I said, I want this to look like it was just cobbled together by a cobbler, an old farmer somewhere. 
<laughs> not my dad. Heavens, uh, no. Not Mary said, dad. I'm so proud of my niece. She's going to carpentry school this fall. Isn't that How cool. exciting? I mean, if I get one side done here, I can, you'll be able to see what's going on. Again, my dad used to, back in the day, my mom could tell you how to do it. We talked about this over on Facebook. He used to spit tacks. Like, he would just get a mouthful of these tacks, and somehow he would spit them out of his mouth. And I don't know how that happened. He was like an air gun, basically. Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to finish off this one little edge here. popped another nail up I while did. you were putting I that did. one in. I watched it. I know. I could see it coming up. Yep. Where do you get your fabric? Oh, my goodness. I I am a fabric hoarder um, anywhere. Anywhere I can find it. But I have stocked some, like, European textiles that I'll find on eBay or Etsy. There's fabrics.com. There's linen. Fabrics.com. Really? And they have some nice stonewashed linen. Um, I like the stonewashed stuff, especially. Can you guys see what I'm doing, even? <laughs> kind of. Kind of. But it just would be hard to for you to even continue doing it with a... <laughs> you know what I mean? If you tipped it towards us anymore. I'm sure you're gonna once you got them in you can turn it towards us and show. Come on you. I might even. Alright, so see what I'm doing. I'm gonna be can you right over this way a little bit, Mom? Nope. That way. So there see what go. I'm doing? I'm kind of, I'm going to just edge these right along here. Um, I was going to trim this off with a razor blade right here, but now I'm thinking just to give this a little better stability, I might staple this underneath. Yeah. What do we think, guys? I think so. Okay. I'm just going to Hold on, let me just, just, let me just zoom out a bit here. See if we can get a better. Uh, here's what I. Yeah. Um, tell me if this helps. Can you hear us now? Can you hear us? Okay, we're back. So it's something to do with the microphone. Okay, I can snip into this. I guess we're going to do like a partially deconstructed look. How does that sound? I wonder why that happened. It'll get a little break from how loud that must have probably been. Okay, I'm going to try to plug the boom in again and tell me if it's working or not. If the sound is working. Okay. So they know hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? 
I take the sound away again. What's that? I'm asking if I took the sound away by plugging that back in. It's still working? Okay, good. Excellent. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone, for your feedback. So because I'm, I'm upholstering a little um, curved edge here, I'm just going to snip right into this fabric so that it eases around that, that curve a little bit. Really needed to hear the sound of that. Yeah, I'm almost <laughs> loud and clear. <laughs> oh, it's done. <laughs> no one complains. Good. They complained when they didn't hear it. Like, oh no, we don't want to lose. Okie doke. So now. Here we go. I've got my got my stool covered. See yes. This? Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim away. Perfectly centered. Well a, done. Thank you. With a single edge razor, I'm just going to trim away underneath here. Please be careful. Why? You don't trust me with a sharp object? Um, Laura Lee says a pair of middle nose pliers would help hold the tacks. Absolutely. Yes, they would. But I'm, I'm like, yeah. Basement Chronicles t-shirt idea. Did we talk about that? Oh, no. That's kind of interesting. Really? Would you like that, you guys? Okay, Mary Jo says the audio is gone for her now. What about everybody else? I wonder if it's something with YouTube. No, because it was... It came back like the second I pulled that out. Hmm. I don't know. Okay, Mary Jo says we're back. Okay. okay. <laughs> you know what? Let me check. Okay, we're good here. I just want to make sure this is sure this. Okay. Is. Yeah. Yes, they're saying. Sure. Well, the basement chronicles. <laughs> okay. All right. We can we can do something like that. Never no, done let me go back and see if I can find your comment. Oh, she needs a t-shirt with the Basement Chronicles by Ellen J. Goods. Oh, that's funny. Oh my gosh. Would, isn't that funny? That would be cute. It would be with cute. With a small batch. Mm-hmm. Would we make it in like a, like as if it was a grain sack? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, I have some wonderful linen duster coats that are coming. Oh my gosh. So excited. So I'm just using my razor blade to trim along this edge here. A t-shirt would really be cute. And then yeah, we just need an Ellen Jacobs t-shirt, period. There's a demand. The people want to represent Ellen Jacobs. Well, I have a we really must. cute design that I started working on. Gosh, I think it was two years ago. I have a really cute design. We retired our one that we had at the shop that was kind of uh, Winston related. Mm -hmm. um, but it would be fun to do another one. It really would. Linda said like the oval sign. Mm -hmm. Like the oval sign Linda said. And by the way, we should have like an Ellen Jacobs sign down here when we're doing this. Oh yeah. That's a great idea. You know what? I can't do that though because it has an IOD um, transfer on it. So I could come up with something different. Why can't you? I can't reproduce that image to sell. No, I just meant you need a sign down here. Oh, like, oh no, but somebody else was saying, you know, like the Ellen J. Goods oval sign upstairs. Like, does that have a transfer on it? Yes, it does. Oh, well, we can come up with something oh, similar. Oh, I come up with something. You leave it to me. You leave it to me, ladies. I mean, and gentlemen, we will. No one else is going to do it. That's right. All right. So now I'm going to go back to my tacks. And right here, I'm I'm actually going to make this part a little more deconstructed right along here. I'm just actually going to trim this off with a razor blade. Okay. 
I know this look isn't for everybody. I just happen to love it. I love the it's frame. You. I love it. And then I'll I'll pop a few tacks in here. I just need some long nails. Maybe when I get them done the next time I'll ask for some extra long nails. Extra long nails. Or I could use the pliers, the needle nose pliers, like she said. Yeah, if I could. Well, Someone says the extra material could have been flooded under to give strength to the ex for the extra tax to go in. Absolutely, you are correct. You are correct. There's more than one way to oh, upholster. Oh, did I say that right? She said flooded, but maybe she meant folded fold under. Yes, okay. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Joanne and Paula love the deconstructed look. I do. I love that deconstructed look. Just very like rustic. I will I will continue like to put tacks around um, to trim off that edge. I just think it looks so cool. I wanted to do that for the whole thing, but I realized as we started this, it would take me forever to tack this in place. So Arlinda, we do feel very lucky for anybody watching to have anybody watching us at all. Oh, I'm so lucky. <laughs> Oh my gosh, lucky, blessed, we are, Sometimes like, we have yet to impress any of um, mom's grandchildren with their viewers, with our views, but. Have your children <laughs> subscribed to our channel? Yeah, we okay. have to beg. Back when I started this YouTube channel, I just started and said I was going to start doing videos. Little Oscar, Oscar and Sophia were here with me one day and I was just messing around on YouTube and had just put up a first video, and it had maybe, I don't know, like 20 views or something and those like are my that. sister's kids, by the way. Yes. And Oscar told me they were just freaking out that I was going to have a YouTube yeah. channel. Like, oh my gosh, Mimi, you're going to be on YouTube? <laughs> and then they, and Oscar, in all seriousness, said, just remember, Mimi, that if you reach about a million viewers, you're going to have haters. <laughs> and, and I said, haters? Who? would hate Ellen J. Goods. And he was like, I don't know why they do, but there's haters out there. I said, then what should I do when that happens? He said, just ignore it. Yeah. Don't answer them. I yeah. Said, okay. I'll keep that in mind. And Henry does keep a close eye. Henry is subscribed. He my does son, he My watch? youngest son, Henry, he does check in from time oh, to time. And he says, oh, I see, your, I see your subscribers went up a bit since last week. Oh, that's adorable. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. He keeps it. He just keeps an eye on the, our progress. I don't know that he's watching fully watching videos. He's keeping an eye on the yeah. statistics. Yeah, is what he's he, doing. That's exactly right. Um, both he and Levin has have discussed how can you monetize this. <laughs> <laughs> they actually used the word monetize. <laughs> really? Isn't that the craziest thing? Uh, is Henry's vocabulary thing? is crazy. I know. Oh my gosh. So yeah, this is uh, this is what we're doing. I love it. I'm That's gonna a good be, idea. I'm Stapling gonna tassels, but tattered looking, made with that material around each leg would look cool. Good. I mean, you know what? I love this look too. Um, I don't know that I would do it on here, <laughs> but you know, when you when you take the like attach here, right? So attach yeah. something here, and then bring it like crisscross it around like this down the leg. Oh, that's yeah, what I gotta that's do. Cool. Arlene was, was talking when she said that about um, being lucky to have so many followers. She meant like in the t-shirt. <laughs> we'd have like, oh. like we'd have a lot of people to buy them. <laughs> yes. They do have a cool Mimi, Wendy. Aw, Wendy. Jan, Jan, welcome here. Hi, Jan. Which Jan is this? She's new. Jan G. Jan G. She just found her channel Jan the other day. Nope. A new Jan. A new Jan. Yes, he just found our channel. Welcome, Jan. Okay, so look, I've just ripped the selvage off of this. Mm -hmm. Oh, who said that about adding the tattered tassel? I'm not sure. Tell me your name. Her screen name is French is 19. Ooh, I or like French the sounds of that. 19, I'm not sure. I do like the sounds of that. But what's your name? Oh, you guys. All right. I mean, come on. Right? Who gave
gave me this thought? Who put this idea I told you in already. my head? Deborah. Her Deborah. name is Deborah. Oh, Deborah. Just what we needed, another Deborah. We collect we Deborahs have, here. We collect Deborahs, Lisas. Yep. Um, Jans, I guess, now, too. We collect Jans as well. Welcome, Jan. New Jan. But, okay. This takes it right over the top, you guys. Look at that. Love it. Oh, my goodness. What do we think? Tell us in the comments below. What do you think of the <laughs> added tattered ribbon on here? Some people won't like it. No. Oh, I get it. But I See. like it. I think it looks good. Oh, my goodness. So cute. Oh, what is the brand of your staple gun? This oh, like okay. Your most this popular is popular question. It is, and I'll put a link down below. This is the Bia. It is a long nose upholstery stapler. If you go on Amazon, look for Bia. Excuse me. Lunch. <laughs> Bia Gross. long nose staple gun. Oh, Arlita, that did not come across snotty at all. I don't want to work like that. Let me go like this. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is just too cute. until mommy does it too short. But I don't know if I like that bow on there anyway. I think I'd rather do this instead of a bow. Okay. Don't you think? I love, I live for a bow, so. You live for a bow? Uh-huh. Well, that's pretty awesome. Oh, I just like the bow. I love the bow, too. I like a feminine touch. But okay. I do like, I like this. I think, I yeah. like that. I do a little less frou frou, I guess. Exactly, yeah. When you're working with this kind of a fabric, too, and you start to try to make a bow with it, it, it can be kind of tough. Do we like it? I like the minimal tacks on this side much better than on the other side. Okay. Well, we're going to work on that. We're going to work on our tacks. Um, and then I'll post this, certainly. Um, I'll put it for sale on our website, or I might take it home with me. I just don't know yet. And then, if still, you might take it home, and if somebody bought it, you would still sell it to them. <laughs> um, I don't know. Well, I have a chair for home that I actually need to upholster in grain sack. I've had the pieces of grain sack sitting on it for almost five years, I know. just laying on top of I it. Know. <laughs> So it's here, and my husband, my dear husband, brought it back to the basement here and said, I'm not taking it out of this basement until you actually upholster it, and then it's then it can go home. So, yeah, um, you're thinking, well, but see, I have to, but I have to put them all across there to hold this in place, Megan. Okay. Okay? I don't want to start, you know... Okay, so here's another really cute thing that you can do with these, um, with grain sacks. You know, we treasure those little patches and, and pieces of sack, grain sacks that are, that are, um, patched. Yeah, and got it. Any other ways you want to say that? Patched and <laughs> patched. So, <laughs> I might likely, and I do this on some of my other pieces, I'm trying to find a grain sack that has a patch on it. So this is actually, believe it or not, this is a very desirable thing on an antique grain sack. It shows that it's worn. Yeah, it definitely and, looks and worn gives its it. age. Yeah. So um, here's another one. I mean, isn't that incredible? I love this. And Lorraine prefers it without the lace around the legs. Okay, because that's fine. The legs fun. are so beautiful. The legs are beautiful. And if you'd like to buy it, we can easily remove that lace. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. Um, so, yeah, I very often on, like, my 
the ones that I reproduce, I will add a patch here and there, like on my pillows. So I would take, um, it reminded me of ballet shoes too, Amy. Yeah, exactly. But I could, I could take just a, a little scrap like this, right? And I could stitch that on there. I could stitch it from underneath if I wanted to really get fancy and create like a little opening and put this underneath. Or I could just take a, a darning needle and actually just stitch this over top. That could be a really cute look too. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I like the simplicity of this. Yeah, it's nice. And uh, we'll decide if we're going to keep these. Um, Tina said, can you gray it and then patch from underneath? Absolutely. Yes, you can. Yep. What does gray it mean? Gray it, like make this a darker color. Is that what you mean? Oh, fray it. Or fray. Yeah, absolutely. Fray. I could I could take a little cross I would do it before I upholstered, but I could take a piece of my grain sack. Oh, that goes to a chair. I don't want to do that. But let me get my linen here. So what, what she's saying is right here, like um, I could take, I could cut a space here. I could just cut a square out, okay? Okay, and she's saying like you could fray it. You could also turn the edges under, mm -hmm. but you would patch from underneath and then hand stitch, or you could machine stitch too. Okay, so is that what that's what you mean, correct? Mm -hmm. Deborah said to add color, you could use colored heaven thread and add those patches kind of like crochet. Absolutely. You could do so many that would things. Be cool. So many things. All right. Well, you guys, I think that's it for today. We're going to finish this off. I will certainly post it in the community and um, share this wonderful little project. We're going to put links in below to our grain sap collection. They're going to be shipping hopefully by the 22nd. Mm -hmm. They're already in production. We're just waiting for them to get here. So um, thank you so much for joining us, you guys, and we will see you next week. It'll be week 14 here on YouTube in the basement, and we'll see you Friday upstairs with who knows what we're going to be doing. Not so, mom. Not mom. <laughs> she doesn't know. <laughs> she but she'll think of something by I'll then. I'll think of something, and it'll be fun. <laughs> okay. So All right. Friday or next week. Absolutely. Bye -bye. Have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon.